Well, if you're Magnus, then probably this video is not for you. But if you just want to learn and gain some experience in the opening that I'm about to show you, then stay tuned. You know, sometimes it can be quite challenging for most beginners and intermediate level players to choose the right opening against White's first move, E4. Especially in serious games and uh, tournament matches where they have to face stronger opponents. Well, in point of fact, the opening that I'm about to show you is not just suitable for beginners and intermediate level players, it is also played by advanced players and uh, masters in an effort to avoid lots of theories, because you know, not all days are Mondays. Sometimes we wake up very tired and unprepared, but we just have to participate in a tournament. And if time allows, I'm going to challenge one or two random chess players on leeches so that I can demonstrate to you guys how this opening works. So after your opponents move pawn to e4, just simply play pawn to e5. Remember, pawns should always go first. Knight to f3 by white attacking the pawn on e5. Just go knight to c6 defending your pawn on e5. And according to the opening principles, remember knights are supposed to be developed first before the bishops. And after let's say white plays bishop to c4, here you have two options. To avoid the fried liver after knight to f6, I recommend that you play bishop e7, even though you can still play the gyoko piano with the move bishop to c5. In my opinion, for intermediate players and beginners, bishop e7 is more solid, and you won't have to face many traps with this move. This is the most solid move I can recommend for you guys. Pawn to d4 may be played by white, although in this position, the most common move is castle shot by white, where I recommend that you go knight to f6 and if d3 just castle short and you can see in this position it's very difficult for white to do any tricks or to set up any traps because your opening is simple and solid white cannot easily break through the center you always have pawn to d6 next you will develop your bishops out or sometimes even to the e6 square in an effort to exchange with this bishop on c5 Pawn to h6 will always be on the plate followed by king to h7 with ideas of expanding on the king side after locking the center. That is optional of course. Anyways, pawn to d4 is the secondary option that you are going to see most of your opponents playing. In this position, just play pawn to d6. Now believe you me, in this position, most of your opponents won't even take your pawn on e5. Trust me, they will go d5 after which you should play knight back to b8 followed by bishop g4 to pin the knight on f3, then a knight to f6, and finally knight bd7, you will also cast a shot afterwards. But what happens if white takes on e5? Well, this is not much of a stretch. We'll just take back the pawn. And if queen takes on d8 with check, bishop takes on d8 is the way to go. Knight g5 attacking the f7 square. Well, in this position, knight to h6 makes sense. And it is also played at master's level. Now this knight here looks useless so it has to go back. White is also intending to take on h6 so that he can double up your pawns. Here I recommend that you just go knight g4 with an intention of putting your knight on f6 normally. So h3 will be played by white, knight to f6 attacking the pawn on e4. Again we are back to our formation. Knight c3 defending the pawn on e4. Castle shot and you can see by the arrows our plan is very simple. Since there are no queens we are going to play h6, we are going to play s6, we are going to play bishop to e6 after playing rook e8. We also have intentions of going bishop to e7. By the way rook e8 and bishop to e6 aims at exchanging bishops. For example bishop e3 and now our expectations should be knight to g5 or knight to b5. So a6 makes sense to stop that. White castle short then a6 again to stop knight to g5. So here you can see we are just playing a simple game. There are no any funny tricks or traps to confuse you. Rook fd1 may be played by white. Rook e8 is what I recommend. Pawn to f4 is playable. Bishop e6 aiming to exchange bishops. After bishop takes on e6 take with your rook. b3 is playable. Just develop your bishop to the e7 square intending to go bishop b4 next so white plays knight e1 and in this position you have so many good options to go with but the most solid one is just to start exchanging pieces since you have a comfortable position you can go rook d6 in this position intending to put your other rook on d8 then let's say after rook takes on d6 c takes on d6 you have an option of putting your rook behind the d pawn play like this and you will thank me later 
This is a very simple setup that you guys can try out without facing any complicated opening theories. Just to be simple, the next thing from here that you are going to be thinking of is how to take full control of the center, that is all. The whole battle of chess should always be on the center of the board. So from here you will just start fighting for the center and making sure that you do not lose any piece or any pawn for free. So again this opening is called the Hungarian defense. White didn't really have to take on e5. You will see most of your opponents going pawn to d5, for example pawn to d5, after which I recommend that you go knight back to b8. This is not a wasted move. This knight can always come back to the d7 square. For example, in this position, white may play bishop d3. Here you just simply develop your knight to f6 and after let's say c4 by white, you just castle shot, knight c3. Then in this position, before developing your knight to d7 with an intention of putting it on c5, you first of all want to play pawn to f5 so that you can stop pawn to b4 attack on your knight. And that's why in this position pawn to f5 makes a lot of sense so that for example if white castle shot, instead of knight to d7 you can even go knight to a6. For example knight to a6 intending to put your knight on c5. In the next moves, h6 will always be on the plate. This knight can always go wherever you want to put it. And later on start exchanging pieces. You always have an option to pin a white knight on f3 to the queen on d1. But most importantly in the middle game you will need to start thinking of how you can initiate your pawn breaks. And even better just advancing your pawn to the f4 square. And if you can, you should always think of putting this knight, for example, it can go to h5, then later on put it on f4, provided that it cannot easily be captured by your opponent's piece, not to mention that you also have pawn to f5, intending to capture on e4, in order to open the f file for the rook. So this is a simple opening that you can learn, in order to avoid lots of complicated theories. Okay, the name of this opening is the Hungarian defense, to be specific, or the Hungarian defense, whatever you may pronounce it. Regarding this opening, the last time I checked the statistics, I discovered that most beginner players who lose with this opening only tend to mess up in the middle game or in the end game, which shows that it is really nothing to do with the opening but their positional understandings. And before I continue, you guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I feel so encouraged to bring you more wonderful content. Therefore, I'm giving you 4 seconds to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Okay, so now let's have a game. So I just want to show you guys how this opening works in practical terms. So we have e4, e5, knight to c6. Bishop c4, bishop e7. So we are guarding the g5 square, just like I said earlier on. So d4, d6. Now in this opening guys, you shouldn't mind to exchange queens very early in the opening because, you know, as black we have uh, very few options anyways. So we do not mind trading our queen or trading queens. A6 is coming. So A6 taking away the B5 square. So here what do I want to do? Hmm. Can I play... Queen e8. Queen e8. Yes. Hmm? Queen e8. Planning to go knight h7. Knight h7. Knight h7. Knight g5 is the idea. Oh, so whenever you see this battery, white is uh, planning to suck on h6. I'm going to allow him, anyways. So let me go king h8. What is he going to do? Is he going to suck on h6? And <laughs> that's what he did. This guy is a 23 rated chess player. Let's see how he's going to convert this. Let him prove his suck. So I'm going to take on e5 with my knight. I also have plans to go knight g5. So first let's take on e5, right? He has knight to d5. Knight takes on e5 anyways. Take, take. Bishop g5 attacking the queen. 
Okay, I think uh, <laughs> this was just too much. I think uh, White has lost the game. So you can already see we used this opening. So let's prevent White from going to the d5 square with pawn to c6. Yes, pawn to c6. Let's take away that square. Next is bishop e6 in an effort to exchange the light squared bishops. Okay, so when you're up material or when you have an advantage, start trading pieces because the more pieces you trade, the more chances you have of winning the game. So if pawn takes, I'll take his free queen. <laughs> so a 2300 rated chess player just hanged his queen in 20 moves. So you can see how effective this opening can be even against higher rated chess players. The guy is from Colombia. And I just did a quick analysis here with Stockfish. And according to Stockfish, I haven't made any blunder. I haven't made any mistakes. I haven't made any blunders. Only five inaccuracies. And what Stockfish counts as inaccuracies are moves such as point to h6 and point to a6. So that is not really a bad move. But in the mind of Stockfish, that is an inaccuracy. Stockfish wanted me to take on d4. But if d5, I had knight back to b8 and knight d7, knight f6, castle shot. Just don't pay much attention to what Stockfish says, especially when it comes to comments such as inaccuracies. Maybe blunders, yes. But again, you're not stockfish. You're a human being with feelings and emotions, whatever. So chess is more psychological than physical, you guys. So don't always follow what stockfish says. Because at the end of the day, you are just a human being prone to error. So you can see we just used our opening to defeat a 2300 rated chess player. And just like I told you earlier on, they don't normally take on e5 because white doesn't want to exchange queens very early in the opening stage. That's just a fact. And for us as black, we do not really mind trading queens in the opening because again, when you're black, you do not have many options. So after analyzing this game with Stockfish, I even discovered that I had an advantage throughout the game in the opening in the opening stage, middle game stage, and end game stage. So here I just tricked him with pawn to f5 in an effort to win his free queen. Because psychologically I knew my opponent was going to hang his queen. Okay, so now let's have a game. So I just want to show you guys how this opening works in practical terms. e4, e5, knight a3, knight c6. Okay. Now let me show you how this opening works in practical terms, guys. So I'm controlling the g5 square now with my bishop, knight to f6, planning to go h6 next, and s6 is always on the plate. So I'll castle short. If d4, I'll play d6. Castle short. s6 first. h6, preventing any piece from coming to the g5 square so d6 so you've seen how i have played this game very simple but yet effective i think we can i have intentions of putting my knight on e7 then g6 look at how my pawns are sitting on the center very solid and i have my two knights on the king side next i'll go bishop e6 intending to exchange the light squared bishops. Oh, let me pay. rook b8 or g6. I mean b6. If text text. Let me take his bishop now. Mm, okay. So this is how we play this opening. Just trying to figure out the continuation from here. Maybe I should go, if pawn takes, I'll take. If white takes, I'll take. Maybe I should play king h7. Should I? Or maybe knight h7 or pawn to a5 first, locking 
the queen side if knight at if knight f5 i'll go oh wait a second hmm this is not easy but uh you can see there's no theory involved here we're just playing chess and that's the beauty of this opening king h7 first i'll go can i play knight now i'm not afraid of the knight on f5 can i go knight h5 intending to do the same if takes i'll take with my knight. okay so i have knight e7 challenging that knight on e challenging that knight on f5 if knight takes i'll take with my queen oh we take the knight i'm having i'm having a feeling i did not play the middle game very well i'm having a strong feeling i messed this up in the middle game my opening was just okay but i messed up in the middle game so clearly this has nothing to do with the opening i just showed you guys it's everything to do with my brain cells <laughs> okay so i just hung the rook on a8 but that's not really hanging anyways I was just going to be down material. Is it not not down material? Down an exchange. So queen queen c6 attacking the knight on f3. Mm. I was going to be down an exchange. Queen d7 attacking the pawn on f3 on h3 attacking the pawn on h3 i also have ideas of putting my bishop on e7 and then c5 e7 tending to go c5 what is that is that not a blunder i mean i have rook takes on f2 rook takes on f2 check what was my opponent thinking i'm winning a free bishop and then i and then i can also take on g3 i can take on g3 now right and this will set a beautiful trap yeah let me take on g3 because now white thinks he can take my rook obviously he thinks he can take my rook on a8 just trying to reason with my opponent now this is psychology in chess you guys this is not a perfect game but what so i can take the knight So I can take the knight, taking the knight on e6. Yeah, because I have c5, bishop c5 checkmate. So my opponent missed that tactic. Oh, okay. Now this is crazy. Definitely I'm going to post this one. I'm going to post this game also on YouTube. So, queen takes, bishop takes, checkmate. So, I started very well in the opening and then I messed up in the middle game but still won in style. So, the purpose of this game was just to show you guys how to play an opening which I recommended for beginners. It's nothing to do with uh, what I was doing in the middle game, actually. <laughs> okay, you guys, I hope you've learned something from those games. Even though the middle games and the end games were not that perfect, I just wanted to demonstrate how effective the opening is. I know you can play better in the middle game and end game, unlike me. But again, this is just blitz, guys. And anything is possible. Okay, so that's it for today. Until next time, see you.